being able to recognize chords quickly and effectively at the piano will not only make sight reading a lot easier for you, but it will also make memorizing a lot simpler too. Stay tuned for some strategies of how to get better at this skill. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first trip here, then please don't forget to subscribe. Simply click the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. Most of us classical pianists aren't really taught very much about chords, aside from the basics we need to understand arpeggios that we use during our exam grades. However, being able to recognize them quickly and effectively at the piano is a great skill to have. You'll find that it makes sight reading a lot simpler because you can turn things from 10 pieces of information into just one. You'll also find that it helps you memorize easier as well. As a bonus, it also improves your knowledge of basic theory and harmony, and you'll find it makes it quite easy afterwards to play by ear too. I'm sure you'll have noticed these many videos on YouTube that talk about learning four chords and being able to play thousands of songs. And to a certain extent it's true, I'm not saying it's not, but it won't help you a lot with classical music, you know, aside things such as the minuet in G that we all learn when we're starting out. Many classical composers, in fact all classical composers, don't limit themselves to a palette of only four chords. Even Bach's famous prelude in C major very, very quickly wanders off into some quite complex and beautiful harmonies away from these basic four chords too. And this is one of the simpler things in the repertoire to learn. Originally, I'd thought that this chord video would just be one, but I'm actually going to need to split it down into, I think, three or maybe even four. Chord recognition actually happens in two places. Of course, you need to be able to recognize the chord from the dots that are in front of you on a piece of music. And then secondly, you have to recognize exactly where that chord is on the piano when you come to play it. And these are two skills that we can actually learn independently. And to be honest, I find when trying to learn something new, the less I give my brain to try and cope with at one time, the better. As you've probably guessed from my other videos, my main interest is classical music. I mean, I do like some popular music. It's always nice to play it when it appears in the scores of Pianist Magazine, for example. And there are a couple of popular tunes, such as Misty, which is my all-time favorite, that I do enjoy playing at the piano. But I would say that 95% or maybe even more of my time is spent focusing on classical music. So you might be a little surprised to know that now what I'm going to advise you to do for this process is for five or ten minutes a day, no more, put your classical scores to one side. First, let's look at the skill of recognizing chords on the piano. Now here I'm assuming that basic chords you're already familiar with. If I ask you to play a C major chord, you'd instinctively know where to go to play that chord. You might not know every chord in every key, but for the purpose of these videos, you really just need to know first, what is a major chord? What is a minor chord? And what is a seventh chord? The most important thing to remember when you start off with the exercises I'm going to describe to you now is pick music that you know really, really well. Doesn't matter whether it's songs from the shows, whether it's church hymns, whether it's Christmas carols, you know, pretty much anything will do as long as it's not too complex. 
it basically just needs to be things that you know the tune well enough that you can sing it along or hum it along in your head. Now, believe it or not, we're not actually going to start off with sheet music. What I'm going to recommend is start off with what are called guitar tabs. Now, basically, a guitar tab is very simply the words to a song with a chord written above them at the point that chord either is played or changes. You'll find lots and lots of these on the internet. They're very, very easy to find, and you can buy books of them from Amazon if you wish also. At the moment, if you do start noticing chords with things like dim or sharp nine or flat five written after them, then just put that version of the guitar tab to one side for now and come back to it later. So let's look at Amazing Grace as an example. This is probably something you'll know from school, from church, from Elvis Presley, or you'll have heard countless other singers sing it over the years. So it's a melody I hope that everybody will recognise and will know very, very well. What we're actually going to do is we're going to practise by playing just the chords. We're not going to worry about the melody. We'll play the chords and we'll sing or hum the melody in our heads. You don't need to sing it out loud. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that for you here either. But basically, the idea is just practice the chords. If you're a real novice, just practice them in root position. You can either use a single note in your left hand, an octave in your left hand, or play the chord with both hands if you prefer. It doesn't really matter. The key thing is you're trying to get used to what the chord looks like in your hand when you play it. Next, all you really need to do is find lots of different songs in lots of different keys and do this exercise with all of those songs until pretty much you can do it without thinking. Next, we're going to recycle exactly the same music we used last time in all those different keys. But rather than playing chords in a root position, we're actually going to use what I call an economy of movement version of the chords. That is to say that we will try to move our fingers as little as possible when we change from one chord to another. Let's use Amazing Grace again as our example since we did it last time. Now exactly where you start from in this economy of movement idea doesn't really matter. You can start from here, from here, or from here. And indeed, as you practice, you might choose to practice in all three versions. Now, basically, all we're going to do as we play is we're going to move our fingers as little as possible to go from one chord to another. All you're really doing here is using different inversions of those chords without having to worry about what that inversion's called. So now, do this same exercise with all of those same pieces that you used for the first set of exercises we did. Again, keep doing these until you can pretty much do it without thinking, and it'll take a lot less time than you think. Now, of course, you might struggle to find guitar tabs in all 12 keys, 
And to be honest, especially with simplified versions, they do tend to restrict the number of keys that they use. So what I've done just to help you out is I've taken Amazing Grace and I've transposed it to all 12 major keys for you in a guitar tab format. And I've linked a file in the description below that you can download if that's what you'd like. And I'm sure if you use this file, you'll then be able to work out how to translate other songs from one key to another. So by now, what you've learned how to do is to recognize all of the most common chords in most major keys. So now we're going to try something ever so slightly more difficult, and that's something that I call lead sheets. Now a lead sheet is quite simply a simplified version of sheet music where the melody is written out for you, but there's no left hand and you just have the chord symbol with the melody and you make the rest up yourself. Again, these are very widely available on the internet. You can download them and you can also get books of them from places like Amazon. Just one word of advice, so search for simple lead sheets to start with. Avoid anything with jazz lead sheet in the title because you'll find the jazz ones have got quite complex chords, which at the moment we've not covered. So we'll come back to those later. All we're now going to do is we're going to repeat what we did in the last exercise, except we'll add the melody. And to do this, we can do it in three different ways. And initially, you might want to practice all three different ways just to get used to it. So the first way is we play the melody with our right hand. And then in the left hand, we play a simple root position chord. The second way we can do it is, again, to play the melody in our right hand, but in our left hand we use the economy of movement version of the chords. And then the third way is to play the melody in the right hand plus some notes from the chords as well. And in the left hand, just play either a single note in the bass or an octave note in the bass. So remember, the object of the exercise is to give your brain as little new stuff to think about at any point in time as you can. Always do this with music that you know really, really well and that you can sing the melody along very confidently in your head. And thirdly, try to do it in as many different keys as you possibly can. I think this will give you enough to keep you going for a couple of weeks at least. You don't need to spend more than five to 10 minutes a day on this, I don't think. You'll be surprised how quickly you learn it. In next week's video, what we'll look at is the other skill that we need, which is how to convert the dots on the page in front of us into a chord and recognize what that chord is. So if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click that little bell icon so that you're notified of this next video as it's released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.